As you arrive at the portal after you log in, you can create your deployment right away. Choose your options, fire, size. Uh, I'm choosing the different region here. Right, but in essence, after six clicks with all the default options, the deployment is starting. And a few minutes later, you get the full featured Iris service deployed for you in AWS Cloud. The moment deployment is completed, you will arrive into a screen like this. You can see the basic information about your uh, deployment. You can see your fire endpoint right here, and we will give you the example command that you can run from your command line. Okay. What's important is what you don't see here. Our delivery company is essentially going into business of dealing with personal health information in the cloud. That means there are a whole bunch of additional requirements right away. You have to encrypt data and rest in transit. You have to uh, do the audit. You have to uh, maintain the logs. You have to achieve scalability and high availability. Right? We're doing that all for you. Right? So you can concentrate on developing your applications. Now, speaking of development, you probably know that Fire is a collection of REST resources that you interact with. 133 of them. And for each of these resources, we provide you full open API definition. So you know exactly what to do with those resources, what kind of actions they do support. We give you the full schema that you can use, explore, and so on. Right. And not only this, but we give you example payloads that you can send to the server. So for patient, you can see there are plenty of them. Let's just try one of them. Right, so there's a patient uh, demo patient leader. Before I do that, let me uh, uh, run one of my demo applications just to make sure that there are no patients in the system as as of now. Right, let's uh, try it out. Execute. So try execute. Uh, so you see that whole bunch of things that were returned by the server. Result is success, and you even have up there the uh, curl command that you can uh, execute in your terminal. And if we get back to the patient browser, you can see right away that there is a, a new patient there. Right. So 133 resources. Our guys in the delivery business would unlikely uh, interact with very healthcare centric resources such as diagnosis, allergy, but they definitely would uh, interact with supply delivery, supply request. They all right there too. Same idea, you have full API specifications and you have few sample payloads that you can uh, play with. This is uh, fantastic, Anton, and really I think will accelerate uh, fire development. Uh, especially, I like the idea of having some synthetic data that you could play with. But I wonder uh, if you could load in a lot of resources all at once. Yes, absolutely. Let's give it a try. So for loading resources, you have few options. We will do FTP right now, but if you already have your own workloads in AWS Cloud, you can bring your own S3 bucket and load data from there. And so let's do FTP. Okay, here I have uh, 15 sample patient bundles. I am dropping them into FTP client. It takes a few seconds to upload to the cloud. And after it's done, if I refresh my portal page, I see that there are 15 new resources I can import. So let's click on import. Import job starts. Again, a few seconds later, I can get back to my uh, patient browser. Click refresh or search, and I have all the patients, the Peter that we created manually through uh, API browser, and 15 patients that we've just loaded. And I can look at them uh, and do some additional uh, search and filtering based on this. Now, not to brag, but to create this application took me less than one day. Not because I'm so smart, but because we deal dealing with Fire. Fire is a standard. There is API browser that helps a lot, but more importantly, there are plenty of libraries, plenty of GitHub repos, plenty of articles out there that can help you get started. For instance, uh, this application you can download from the InterSystems community uh, GitHub repo. 
Anton, I really like the idea that you can focus on fire development and not have to worry about all the operational issues that our managed fire service takes care of, especially security. But I was wondering, do you have to build everything yourself? Uh, not necessarily. Let me show you one more thing. What is happening now, I'm running Smart on Fire application. If you ever seen this screen before, if you ever worked with uh, Smart on Fire, you probably know already what's going on. So we just loaded one of the patients, we loaded into the system, into pediatric growth chart. Application developed in Boston Children's Hospital, which is kind of poster child, the most frequently demoed Smart on Fire application. What that means is all the Smart on Fire applications out there would work with Iris Fire Server. So you not necessarily have to build everything yourself, just Google a uh, Smart on Fire application gallery. Maybe there is an app that already does exactly what you want. I really like the idea of being able to use all these uh, Smart on Fire apps. And really, I think this is just the first wave because Governments around the world have made fire a standard so that we could basically get at patient data to build these new apps. And there's a real acceleration going on in fire development. And this uh, service, I really think, is going to make it easy for developers to get started.